Good morning. Welcome to St. John the Baptist Roman Catholic Church. Just a quick reminder of the bishop's safety protocols. We ask that you keep your mask on throughout the Mass. We uh, remind you that communion can only be given on the hand, not on the tongue. And at the end of Mass, we ask that you please leave your kneelers down so we know which shoes need to be sanitized. At this time, please stand and greet your fellow parishioners for the modern way as we come together as St. John's Catholic family. St. Francis will be joining us today and preaching. Thanks be to God. We come here as people who on a journey asking God's forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest heaven.
cause the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose. Grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to Shebna, master of the palace, I will thrust you from your office and pull you down from your station. On that day, I will summon my servant Eliakim, son of Hilkiah. I will clothe him with your robe and gird him with your sash and give over to him your authority. He shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. I will place the key of the house of David on Eliakim's shoulders. When he opens, no one shall shut. When he shuts, no one shall open. I will fix him like a peg in a sure spot to be a place of honor for his family. The word of the Lord.
how inscrutable are his judgments, and how unsearchable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord, or who has been his counselor, or who has given the Lord anything that he may be repaid? For from him, and through him, and for him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. The Gospel of the Lord. In today's Gospel, we hear Jesus asking two questions of his disciples Who do people say that the Son of Man is? To which they reply, Some say John the Baptist. After all, he was murdered by Herod and was such a powerful presence that the people would not be surprised to see him again. Indeed, in Matthew 14, 2, Herod said, This is John the Baptist. He has risen from the dead. That is why miraculous powers are at work in him. Others said the prophet Elijah, the worker of miracles, who was expected to reappear. And still others, said the prophet Jeremiah, who had opposed the religious leaders in Jerusalem and had predicted the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple. It is interesting to know the people's opinions of Jesus, but Jesus' first question simply prepares the disciples for his second all-important question. He addresses this question to disciples at large rather than Peter only. The people are free to believe whatever they want about Jesus, but Jesus has carefully preparing his disciples to carry on his work. They have heard his teachings and witnessed his miracles. What they think of him is critical. So Jesus asks, but who do you say that I am? To which Simon Peter replies, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. 
And Jesus says, Blessed are you, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father has. We cannot know what the disciples thought when they first left everything to follow Jesus. Presumably, they have grown in their understanding as they followed him day to day. This, however, is the first time that a disciple has acknowledged that Jesus is the Christ. In the first question, where Jesus is asking, why do people say the Son of Man is, this comes from a secular standpoint, referring to the people of the synagogue and the people on the street, who knew of Jesus, however, but were not sure who he is. The second refers to the disciples, and I believe comes from more within them, what is in their hearts. After all, they have been followers of Jesus for quite some time. So today, as we listen to the questions, as we sit here in church, or perhaps as we are watching from our homes, are we like people listening to Jesus in the synagogue or on the street and know him only on Sundays? Or are we more like the disciples who follow him daily? Do we have Jesus in our hearts with us every day like Peter and the disciples? Follow Jesus. Do we listen and reach out to him every day? After all, a statement like Peter's demands commitment. If he truly believes that Jesus is the Son of the living God, he will have to give his all to Jesus' service. That is also true for us. Then after Peter shows he believes in Jesus, the Heavenly Father, we hear Jesus saying, You are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Catholics and Protestants have divided sharply in their inter interpretation of these words. Catholics understand them to establish Peter as the rock upon which Jesus will build his church. They also understand Peter to have been the first bishop of Rome and the first of an unbroken succession of popes. In effect, we have the beginnings of the church. Jesus goes on to say, Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. I never gave this much thought until several years ago, I was having a discussion with a co-worker, and we started talking about reconciliation and where it was talked about in the Bible. And my co-worker, without missing a beat, said it is in Matthew 16, verse 19, and he quoted this line from Scripture. Was this not only the beginning of the church, however, also the beginning of reconciliation and forgiveness of our sins? So in this powerful gospel, we have Jesus hearing from Peter that he is the Christ, to which Jesus gives Peter the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Jesus has found favor with Peter and given him the task to form the church as great faith in him. Today, since we started with the question, I leave you with this question. Who do you say Jesus is in your life? I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before the all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. 
I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Lord's love is eternal, and so we have the confidence to bring our needs and the needs of our sisters and brothers before God. For Pope Francis, that he may be guided by the Holy Spirit as he binds and loosens here on earth, so that we may grow ever closer to truly realizing the mission of Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, have our prayer. For all who exercise authority, whether in religion, business, education, or government, that they may recognize God as the source of all authority and use their power in performing justice and the common good. We pray to the Lord. Lord, have our prayer. For all who are beginning a new academic year, that students and teachers may learn together as they grow in wisdom and love, and that God will protect them from harm and disease. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those suffering from chronic illness and for their caregivers and loved ones, that they may be given courage and hope to endure the crosses they bear. We Lord, pray to hear the Lord. Lord, hear our For the sick in our parish community and for all those listed in our parish prayer book, may they be healed in body and spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us remember the dead, especially Nobel Lebeck, for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Your kindness, O God, endures forever. Look with kindness on us here today and hear the prayers we make uh, to you. Grant them according to your will through Christ our your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. of unity and peace in your church through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you. Lift up your hearts. Up Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, for you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin so that you might love in us what you have loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts 
of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. So Lord, with all the saints and angels, we too give you thanks as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord. So now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, by the most first, we have to send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine. They become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before he was to suffer, the night of the Last Supper, he took bread, set the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In the way when supper was ended, he took the chalice, he gave you thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. When we eat this bread and bring this Lord, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until we come again. Therefore, Holy Fathers, we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Savior, whom you led to his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection. And whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. We offer you the bread of life, the chalice of blessing. Look with favor upon the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. Grant by the power of the spirit of your love, we become the nouns of the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis, our Pope. Christopher, our bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our sisters and brothers. Inspire in us of words, actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. May your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice. Let all people be raised the new hope. Remember our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead, whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light, uh, light of your face, and in the resurrection give them fullness of life. When also to us, when earthly pilgrimage is done, we come to the eternal dwelling place to live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, the apostles, the martyrs, and all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin, safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant peace, unity, and accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already here and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Complete with me within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy and graciously perfect and sustain us so that in all things we may please you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The diocese has begun a capital campaign. It's the first for the diocese, and the theme of the campaign is Christ our hope. While I do not believe that anyone would ever advise us to run a capital campaign during a pandemic, we have headed down the road, and we need to see that as a tremendous opportunity to strengthen the Catholic Church in Vermont, while also doing wonderful things for our parish and the local community. Our parish, St. John's Parish, has a goal of $173,000, and Sacred Heart St. Francis has a goal of $411,000, of which the parish will receive 60% of those goals. We will be receiving a, you will be receiving a letter from the bishop along with information sheet from the parish highlighting the goal and parish projects. If you're willing to assist with phone calls, please see me after Mass. It will entail calling people, not asking for money, just to find out if they got the phone call. If they have any questions, uh, be happy to help in that regard. So I thank you very much for lending your time, your talent, and treasure to this important project. Thank you, Deacon Gary, for this homily today. We wish you all well. I'm sure I forgot something. That's all there is. Um, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the blessing of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon us today. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another.